It's Monday, May 6th, and I'm your host, Paula Hersey. On Barnstable today, we learn more about earmarks for the town of Barnstable in the state budget, look for parking in downtown Hyannis, and discover how to save money and energy with Cape Light Compact. Now, for a look at municipal and legislative news. In response to our continued concerns regarding the use of synthetic chemicals and substances, the town manager has tasked our health and safety officer in coordination with our chief procurement officer to conduct an internal audit of our municipal operations. In an effort to identify any existing or potential future use of these products, the town has developed and taken under review an organic land management procedures document to assure a consistent management approach to the use of all chemicals of concern. These procedures may result in suggested policies for our legislative body's consideration. State Representative Will Crocker joins us in studio with details for budget earmarks for the town of Barnstable. The budget work on Beacon Hill is steaming right along with me today, Representative Will Crocker. Welcome, Will. Thank you very much for having me once again. So budget things are really kind of just being pushed forward. Uh, lots of things that are uh, legislative updates, but a couple of things that are really unique to Barnstable that uh, have made it into the budget. Why don't you give us yeah. a, an update? Well, the House has finished our preliminary work on the budget. We have approved our budget. Now it's gone to the Senate. The Senate will be working on it uh, uh, starting next week. And uh, a couple of the things specifically for Barnstable that uh, made it in uh, are, well, the first is uh, $25,000 for um, the Youth Summit, the Barnstable Youth Summit, which is something I know that, that, uh, that you're very much involved in. Yeah. Um, their, their situation was a little tenuous. Their, their funding partner, the LaRusso Foundation, was not able to, uh, to come through uh, this year. So uh, the town manager, Mark Ells, asked me to see if what we could do about, about getting funding to make sure that the, that the 2020 Youth Summit happens while they're trying to find a new funding mm -hmm. partner. And we were successful in, in getting that $25,000. So there will, be a, there will be a Youth Summit for, for 2020. And uh, it offers them the uh, the ability to be able to to continue to reach out to try and find a funding partner for that so very glad to see that that's going to continue to happen I've been to a number of those youth summits over the years seen what uh, you know how how a positive thing that they are for all the kids the seventh graders and such and and the, the speakers who have been there uh, so I, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that we were right. able to get funding for it. Making good decisions, especially at that age, um, you know, peer pressure. Mm -hmm. And that Youth Summit, I have to say, is incredibly uh, uh, just uh, mm -hmm. an event that will blow your mind that it's put on by youth. Uh, the Youth Commission of Barnstable mm -hmm. puts this on and they do a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Very engaging, especially for that seventh grader where you yeah. don't always capture their attention. Right, and so, you got to. That's yeah. something you have to do and, and let them know that there's things out there. If they have a problem, they have a situation, that right. there are agencies out there to be able to help them. Yeah, excellent. So we also got um, we also got $24,600 for uh, the community service officers. Another thing that the town manager had asked me to pursue. Um, this will give the, um, the town the ability to be able to fund the community service officers. And they're really the eyes and the ears on Main Street. Uh, and they have been a, a tremendous benefit to Main Street, you ask. Uh, the uh, the people who have their businesses there or the people who even work there uh, how much of a difference uh, the community service officers have been with regard to just making sure that everything is, is, is you know above board and things are going well on Main Street and and if there's a problem um, then they uh, they can get a hold of the police department very quickly um, so you know it, it's good to have them there they've made a tremendous impact and, uh, and Main Street has changed them uh, you know a great deal for the for the positive since they've right. been there. Right, uh, Chief Sonnabin was in this week and actually was talking about the CSO program and, and the additional training that they get in mental health because it's maybe not just homeless individuals but it's other people that are on the streets um, that these uh, young men and women actually have uh, mental health training that they can spot some of these issues right. way before somebody right. else can. And not only that, it's uh, helping the police department with a path to patrolmen. 
So there's actually, I think, two of them that we met yep. last year uh, for the CSOs that are actually now uh, in training. Yeah, it's a, it's a great pathway. You're right. It's an it's a ability for them to be able to see their way towards if that's, uh, you know, if they want to go into a law enforcement career, uh, mm -hmm. it's a great place to start. Fantastic. And can you give us a, an update of where Nero's bill is? Nero's bill is still basically kind of where it was. Uh, we have asked the committee chair to get uh, an early hearing. Uh, we've not heard back from the committee chair on that one, so this okay. week we'll be reaching out to him again, again saying, you know, we've asked for a, a, an, as possible early hearing as possible, and uh, what can you do for us? Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, Will. Thank you very much. Do you live? work, shop, or dine in downtown Hyannis? Are you interested in learning about and providing feedback on potential implementation strategies to increase parking availability, enhance connections between parking facilities and downtown destinations, and improve signage? Join Elizabeth Jenkins, Director of Planning and Development, on May 6th at 5 p.m. right here at Town Hall. Do you live, work, shop, dine in downtown Hyannis? Find parking to be maybe a little difficult to find? Well, there's a new uh, event that will be on Monday, May 6th. Elizabeth Jenkins, Planning and Development. Parking's always a hot button topic. It is, <laughs> <laughs> and one that's been a part of the um, downtown Hannah's Main Street conversation um, for a long time. We think this is a, um, an issue that's really important, obviously, to businesses on the street, to people who visit here, to come to Town Hall, um, whether you're a frequent visitor to Main Street or you're just a, a short-term visitor in the summer. Um, um, fact is, most of us still get around um, by car, so yeah. the parking experience is one um, that's, that's really, uh, again, important to us and become an important part of our economic development program uh, here in planning and development. So, yeah, we're looking forward to um, an event that uh, we're going to be hosting um, the public here on Monday, uh, May, May 6th. Um, May 6th. Yep. Yep, to, uh, to talk to our community about um, uh, the results of a parking study that we did a couple of years ago that really did a comprehensive inventory of parking in downtown Hyannis. And, um, you know, it's been, a, it's been a while since we completed that plan, but we've, you know, we've really, I think, taken some of the, the data that was, that was in that initial parking study and really thought more, again, about the user experience. Um, the, the, the study inventory, kind of all the parking spaces that we have available in Hyannis. Um, you know, we really want to focus on, again, sort of what we have the most control over, which are those publicly owned um, parking lots and the experience right. that our, um, our, again, our customers and our visitors have when they visit those lots. Right. And there's a balance as well. So, uh, you know, Main Street employs an enormous amount of people. Town Hall alone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> employs a yeah. lot of folks. Uh, we don't necessarily carpool in here. So when we're talking about parking and parking spaces, um, one of the things uh, as a traveler that I find is signage. Um, yeah. You know, there doesn't seem to be enough telling folks where those those hidden lots are, right? Because right? <laughs> I go by Ocean Street lot, even though it's a metered lot, it's almost always hem empty, right. but it's not that much money to actually get a spot there. Right, so the purpose of this effort um, is to really think about strategies for implementation to manage parking demand. So we know there's a lot of demand right here on this core of Main Street, um, right around Town Hall, the shops there. There's a lot of activity here. It's got good connection to the harbor. It's a convenient location. Um, and we do, we have, you know, we have a good, um, sort of a good amount of public parking available. But you're right, people aren't distributed in the right way. If you're going to be staying here a long time, ideally you're in a more remote lot and you're parking, uh, you know, a little further away. If you're a customer, um, again, who's looking to go out to dinner or, or you know, grab a quick cup of coffee and, and um, you know, something to eat, you want that convenience. Um, so, how, you know, how do we create that balance? in this downtown core, that's something that we're looking at. And yeah, certainly one of the strategies that um, has been very effective for other communities and that we've heard on Main Street could be improved is the, um, the signage, letting people know, um, letting people know where to park. Um, if you're coming downtown, here are the lots that are available to you. Communicating with our major employers. I mean, in the summer, any one restaurant on Main Street could have maybe 
30 employees. I mean, that's a big chunk of our public parking right. lot. So how do we get businesses to work together? How do we, as a town partner, um, to put some of those, to put, to put those employees in some of the less obvious parking spaces mm -hmm. and uh, increase the capacity of those lots for customers. Um, and, and sort of around that is how do we um, really make sure we're thinking about the whole experience that you have when we come downtown. Because if we're going to ask people, again, to, to maybe park a little bit further away and walk, um, how do we make sure that that environment that we're hosting them in is safe and inviting and, and well lit? And again, you have the signage. If you're a visitor, you know where you're going. Um, so this study, while, while really Monday's mi meeting is mainly focused on um, mainly focused on those parking implementation strategies. There's a piece of this that, that intends to look at, um, at the, the sort of public, what we call the public realm, that's planner jargon, mm -hmm. but <laughs> those sort of public spaces, um, the streets and, and open spaces and how they invite people in to our community and make them feel welcome as well. So the uh, folks that, uh, for the consultant for the town is, is internationally known. They're uh, somebody uh, pretty big out there. So working with them, what's been that experience? Yeah, so we have a great team. Um, our consultant team is from Nelson Nygaard. Um, they did our initial study. Um, they had some turnover. We had some turnover. So we're really kind of taking a fresh look at this. Our partner, um, sort of our lead partner in this, has been um, one who's worked with communities across Massachusetts, um, including Salem, um, okay. to uh, to actually put, put parking plans into action. So we're really lucky to have somebody right. Um, who who has that has that experience and has sort of brought a new take um, on, into this parking management plan? So they're going to be here again on May sixth, five o'clock in the hearing room to sort of present what we know our our inventory and then some of our options in terms of implementation going forward. So we'll be doing that together um, again, sort of in a presentation type format um, led by led by um, Matt Smith, our our consultant from Nelson Nygaard, and then we're going to break it out um, sort of down into an open house um, that really will let people interact with with them and from the team of planning and development um, talk about their issues sort of we'll have some some um, uh, different options for people to be able to weigh in and give public input um, so we really hope it, it, it to be sort of an interactive experience uh, right. for folks so the this meeting at May 6 at 5 p.m. Um, what's the kind of like follow up of this? If if I can't uh, obviously Channel 18 will will have this, so you'll be able to see this Great. presentation. Um, but what's the the kind of the follow up to this meeting? Sure. So I think uh, um, our next steps out of this are again. This is the first time we're sort of regrouping um, again on this effort, making sure that we understand what the community priorities are that. Frankly, we're tackling things that are most important to people first. So that's really our intention um, here is to explain to people the different strategies that we can use, we think, to manage parking demand and start to get an idea of where those where those priorities lie. So so if people can come on the 6th, that's fantastic. We'd love to come talk to you and, and talk about this issue. If not, we're developing some um, online ways to, um, to put your feedback in. We know everybody can't always make it. Um, to the public meeting, but um, certainly Liz Hartsgrove and I are, are always available and committed to, to talking to businesses about how parking um, impacts them. And then, right. um, you know, I in terms of planning for implementation, moving, <laughs> you know, moving towards sure. implementation. Um, so again, working towards those strategies, again, ones that we feel are prioritized. And then thinking about, um, you know, w in terms of next steps, um, you know, how do we evaluate rolling out that implementation? So, you know, one of those things is, um, you know, that's sort of always been on the table, and, and I know a lot of businesses come to me and say, you know, where, where is the town at on this? Is the idea of, of uh, par pricing parking, um, right. you know, putting in meters or, or paying for a lot? So, you know, sort of out of this evaluating how people feel about that and what's an implementation timeline for this. We're probably not going to hit this season, obviously, because it's May. But, um, but thinking, you know, I I if this is something really important to people, um, how, how, do we, how do we make a plan to roll that out? Or if, like it's or if it's not, how can, you know, how can we um, sort of implement other strategies to get us closer to the community's right. goals?
Anything else you want uh, folks to know? Uh, no, I think uh, you're looking forward, hopefully, to seeing everybody um, on May 6, 5 o'clock, uh, in the hearing room. And if not, please uh, reach out to Planning and Development. Um, we have a project webpage set up on the Planning and Development Department homepage. So you can go and take a look at that 2017 study. Again, we'll have the video posted if you're not able to make it. Um, hopefully, some ways to, to interact after the fact. And please stay in touch. We know this is an, an important issue, again, sort of right. to residents and, and our business community. And, and we look forward to, to making some progress on it. Excellent. Sounds like a plan. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. <laughs> Are you planning a remodel or renovation to your home and want to save money and energy? Meredith Miller from Cape Light Compact joins us in studio to talk about some new initiatives for residential homeowners in the new three-year energy efficient plan. Our monthly segment, Cape Light Compact, here with me today, Meredith Miller. Meredith, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Paula. What do you do at the Compact? I'm a senior analyst in the residential side of the energy efficiency part of Cape Light Compact, and that means I'm the program lead for a number of residential programs, interacting with vendors and partners across the state and our customers on behalf of those programs. Excellent. So we know how important energy efficiency is for homeowners, saving uh, money and energy. Mm -hmm. um, there's some new programs that come out every year. The new e energy efficiency plan has just been out. You're here to talk about the residential renovations and additions. I love this program. If you're thinking about renovating or adding an addition, think about energy efficiency. Is that what it's all about? It is. This is an opportunity, you know, this is when people are opening up walls, people are making changes to their house. This is an opportunity a time when we want to get in there and encourage people to do more and make more energy efficient changes and go a little further than they might have. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we are helping people with suggestions and offering incentives for changes they make that are above a certain baseline. All right. So let's talk a little bit okay. about some of the things that might be eligible for this. Sure. I mean, lighting uh, comes to mind, you know, Cape Light Compact would sure. be the thing that comes to mind, LED lighting or, or, you know, those types of things. But there's other energy efficiency things that you can do while you're renovating. Sure. You know, and how, how this program works, it's not based on a specific incentives versus it kind of equipment. We look at a whole project approach and we model what the house or the project would have under, you know, under certain sort of standard builder conditions, mm -hmm. what it would have used, and then we model and see what things could be improved, what the customer already is planning, and we're looking to get to incent people to go a little bit above, and so it's not necessarily a about lighting or heating specifically, but it takes into account any changes that cool. cause the whole project to be more energy efficient. So that does include heating and cooling, water heating, insulation, windows, as well as lighting. So all those things get rolled into an analysis or a model of the home and what's being done. Um, Excellent. So do you work with the homeowner or the general contractor or right. both? It can be it can be either or typically more typically in this program where we're going to be working with the homeowner. The project um, needs to be undertaken by a licensed builder. Okay, okay so um, it also needs to be a permit pulled for it and we do have a minimum of 500 square feet of surface area. But who we're working with is we're happy to talk to builders too, but mostly we're working with homeowners. Um, we're going out to their site. We're doing, it's, it's, a, very, it's a variable program because every project is different. Right. So we're doing a certain amount of hand-holding, looking at the site, looking at the plans, um, modeling what customers are planning to do, and then making suggestions for what they can do even better. Um, so we're really acting as a consultant for the customer. Right. Yeah. So it's maybe that one step further than that assessment piece of it where Cape Light Compact comes in and assesses what you have originally and what might be uh, uh, upgraded at that point. This is all designed as you're ripping out walls and floors and things like that is like right. now you can do, go a little deeper. Right. So the um, standard assessment is for doing energy retrofits to what's existing. Right. Uh, um, you know, maybe adding more insulation, et cetera, and that's a wonderful program. But what we realize is there's a whole sector of the building industry and a sector of our customers that are undergoing renovations or adding, or adding new spaces to their home. And this is really, you're already tearing it up or yeah. you're going to add whole new space. This is to, you know, to 
to push you a little further to add incremental savings and go more efficient in that case. That's great. And how are these incentives calculated? Sure. Uh, that's a, you know, people are, <laughs> it always comes back to money. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so give us a, a kind of like the bird's eye view of calculation for this. Sure. Um, it's called for this program what we call a blended savings approach or pay per for, for performance. And what okay. that means is the more energy you save above a baseline, the more you're going to get for your incentive. And that's whether you're saving kilowatt hours or therms. But also, we calculate what goes into this calculation is the percentage savings. In other words, if someone with a 1,500 square foot home saves, does something through this program that's going to save a certain number of kilowatt hours, and someone with a 4,500 square foot home does the same thing with the same kilowatt hours, that represents more effort in the smaller house. So we're looking at the percentage or the proportional amount of savings as well, and we're giving people credit for that. Because we want you, you need to have at least 5% impact on your usage. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So uh, in most cases, there's going to be savings somewhere for someone's home. Yeah, right, 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 right. And so um, just to give you a sense of the success of this program so right. far, we started with a pilot last year. Um, Cape Light did, had about 20 projects out of a little more than 30 statewide. And we, with other program administrators across the state, rolled this out as a full-scale program January 1st. Cape Light already has 35 folks enrolled. Wow. And our hope is to do 70 to 100 this year. And the goal statewide is 1,500. Um, oh. But we're seeing a lot of success. We've got um, a number of HERS raters who can act as verifiers who are enrolled on the Cape. Right. We've got, at any one time, we have 30 to, to 40 builders on the Cape who participate in new construction and who we hope will also be participating in this program. That's great. And how do people really participate mm -hmm. with this? Uh, you, you talked a little bit about a site visit. and sure. so, so walk me through the process of getting started. How sure. do I start? To get started, all a customer needs to do is to call the 1-800 number for this program, which is um, listed on MassSave, and I can give it to you as well. Um, it's the 1-800-628-YES-8413 number. Mm -hmm. Or they can email um, what's called Renovate Add Mass. So it's Renovate, A-D-D-M-A, at ICF.com. And ICF is our program vendor who's worked with us on the new construction program and now this path for some time. They've set up a call center specifically for this path. Okay. And uh, it was so successful in the first month, they had to double the number of people on the call center. Wow. So yeah, we're getting, you know, probably um, at maybe 30 calls a month for Cape Light, 300 okay. statewide. Yeah. Wow. So they call, and then is this where they schedule a site visit, or is there some kind of qualifier on the sure, call? Sure, sure. When they call, um, the person on the other end, who I just spoke to one yesterday, um, will ask questions about the project, find out where somebody is, ask them, tell them how the program works, and ask some screening questions to make to get a better understanding of whether what they're planning makes, you know, is applicable to this program or if they're actually looking for something that can be done through the retrofit program instead. So there's some screening questions. Mm -hmm. um, and then they will schedule on the spot. Now typically, I mean, we're scheduling now probably two weeks out for site visits. So right. the, the next step is they schedule you for a site visit. Right. Um, and so that's what, what happens. And then someone comes to the site, either an account manager for the program or hers raider who's doing work in the program, and talks to the customer about the project, walks around the site, sees what the plans are, kind of gets an understanding of schedule, and they start from there. Right, and that's a little bit more of what you were talking about mm -hmm. when we first started was the consultation piece of it. They're actually working as a consultant as, uh, on your project, just like your your kitchen magician would, the, the yeah. cabinet people and things yeah. like that. Yeah, well, they're going to give you what they'll do is depending on where your project yep. is. So once you have a sense of your project, um, they will do some preliminary calculations and modeling, tell you what your incentive might be and what things you could do to improve what mm -hmm. your project plans are. And then you'll finalize your plans, um, and they will want to come out and inspect for instance, when your walls are open and the insulation has gone in but hasn't been closed up yet. Sure. So they'll typically be, um, and then they'll also be doing a final inspection when things are all done. Okay. And they'll be doing final calculation of modeling of, of your plan, of your project and right. what happened. Um, and then, you know, probably six to eight weeks later, you'll get a check. 
after you're all done and it's been inspected. So it's right. two or three site visits over the course of your project. Um, if somebody already has plans from a builder, they may be able to, to, instead of an initial site visit, actually do that over the phone and talk through plans and model and make suggestions without a site visit to okay. save that time. Okay. But yeah. And then I guess my final question mm -hmm. would be, is this a, a time-limited program or is it just this year or is it going to run continuously through uh, a number of years? That's a, a great question. No, this is, we, we have no end date for this program. Okay. It's part of our three-year plan and we envision it ramping up a little bit each year over the next three years and then we'll be doing our next three-year plan and, and if it's successful like we, we foresee, it'll continue. Right. And is there like a, a special name for this instead of just residential re renovations right, and right. additions? Good question. So if they call and they want to ask for this program, what are they going to ask for? They're going to ask for renovations. They are going to ask for renovations and additions. But okay. if they ask for just renovations, we'll get them to the right place. Okay. So renovations, I, I, um, we affectionately internally call it RNA. Okay. But uh, renovations is the word. Excellent. Well, okay. that's fantastic news, saving money and energy. Absolutely. Anything else you want folks to know about the program? Just that I think that we're really excited about this on Cape Cod. We know housing is expensive. We know there's a lot of remodeling that takes place. And we're really committed to helping customers improve their, the housing stock of Cape Cod. And this is a good chance to do it. This is a place we haven't really touched you know, until recently. Right. And this is a perfect dovetail to the accessory dwelling units as well. Abs oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Fantastic. Good point. I was all, on, bring that up. all on town warrants across the country. Yes, cave, so. yes, which is very <laughs> exciting in and of itself. Yes. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us, Thank Meredith. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Here's a look at upcoming meetings for boards, commissions, and committees. to do, places to go, and people to meet. The Hyannis High Arts Artist Shanties open for the 2019 season on Friday, May 3rd. Visitors will find something handmade, hand-designed, or handcrafted by local artists in two locations along the walkway to the sea at the Harbor Overlook, 51 Ocean Street, and Bismore Park, 180, 180 Ocean Street, Hyannis. The Artist Shanties are open weekends, Friday, May 3rd through Sunday, June 9th, including Monday of Memorial Day weekend, then seven days a week through the fall. Artists change weekly throughout the season, discover new faces and artwork each week. Log on to www.artsbarnesandgold.com for hours and entertainment schedules. Comments, suggestions, accolades, connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or send us an old fashioned note by Carrier Pigeon. Channel 18 works for you. I'm Paula Hersey, and thank you for watching Barnstable today.